All right. Well, welcome to another edition of the Create the Ripple podcast, where we trust the niggle and we tell the truth. My guest today, I'm really excited to, to be chatting with Sam today. Sam and I have been connected through social media, which is, you know, just changing the way that we are able to connect in today's day and age. But he's got quite a social media feed. So go check him out. He's up to some really big things. But without any further ado, Sam, I'd love it if you could introduce yourself to my audience and to our listeners and let people know who you are, where you come from, and what you find yourself up and about today. Okay. Okay. My name's Sam Lewis. Um, I live in a small island nation of Vanuatu, uh, which not too many people have heard of. So it's a small, small island nation. There's about 180,000 people here uh, spread across 83 islands, and it's in the South Pacific somewhere near, somewhere near Fiji is probably the best way to explain it, which is west of Fiji. Um, I'm a, I suppose, a serial entrepreneur. Okay, I started off in business. I've actually never been employed in my in my adult life, so I started off in business in my, you know, in my in my late teens, um, and built various various different companies um, and gone down the entrepreneurial journey. Um, I've chased a lot of possessions and position in life to realize that that's not that's not what I'm after, um, and I find abundance in a different thing. Hence, hence moving to. To a, to a small island nation around about three and a half years ago. Um, and we live our life out here. When I say we, me and my, me and my fiance and, and the two dogs um, on a 14 hectare homestead with solar and our own water and our own veggies and fully self-sustainable. So that's, uh, that's me in a nutshell so far. Um, what I'm up to at the moment, up to a whole lot of different things. I mean, it's it's a funny thing. I've tried to get out of entrepreneurialism, but uh, you know, you can take the boy out of the city, but you can't take the city out of the boy. Um, so I'm up to. Yeah, I'm actually starting a car wash here, which is very very interesting because um, that was my first <laughs> my first ever entrepreneurial experience was washing cars with my mum's bucket and sponge and stuff like that when I was about six years old. Um, and then I run some online programs. And now I'm, I run some online programs around meditation um, and manifestation and abundance. Wow. Well, I'm I'm having a serious jealous moment. Uh, you know, to imagine that I have. I own a tiny home and so that's sort of my little bit of getting off of the grid and I, I dream of being able to you know park that somewhere where it's warm and I can work online for maybe two or three four hours a day and that's it you know like I I'm I'm eager so it's really exciting to be chatting with you and hearing that you're actually living that life and created that life and you have that I I loved your post where you were like you know, the Jungle Book was, you know, favorite movie as a kid. And you look outside your, your window and there's the jungle. And I was like, oh, my gosh, manifestation really does happen, which is exciting. 100%. Yeah, it's, so, it's quite funny. I mean, I'll start that. Sorry, you go for it, Candice. No, I was just going to say, I, I wanted to chat with you about that because a lot of what you talk about is this manifestation piece, why it works and why it doesn't. And you know, I'm curious because I, I feel like I live a life that's manifested and I make manifest my best life, but I am always intrigued because I'm like, you like level it up, right? There's manifestation and there's, you know, Sam Lewis and he's like living the manifested life. So yeah, with that calls yours. Okay. Um, manifestation. See, I believe, um, I believe that everything that we live and this whole reality that we see is, is the manifest reality. Um, and this, this is created through, through, through our minds. Um, and and we, we manifest this reality and this perception of it. Um, this came, became apparently very, very clear to me um, only a, actually a couple of months ago, more so than ever um, during a meditation where that whole sort of veil of reality on some people have had these experience with ayahuasca and this sort of stuff. I don't, I, I prefer meditation, um, but that veil of reality was revealed. Um, and I've sort of, you know, I've played around with manifestation for a large, large period of my life. And I really do believe that we create absolutely everything in our life, whether that be positive or negative. Um, and it's controlled by, by our thoughts um, and our thoughts in three main factors. And that's our clarity, consistency and strength. Um, so it's the clarity of the thought, okay, how clearly you think it, um, how specific your goals are or how smart your goals are, if you know that acronym. Um, and, you know, the consistency of the thought. So how consistent is that, is that thought happening? Um, and then the strength of the thought. Okay. And so to, to be able to, you know, work with clarity, consistency and strength is, is, is a huge part of it. Um, 
so yeah so i i with the with the strength aspect of it i really work with with meditation keeping my vibration at a high level because i believe this manifest reality is yes we 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 get taught through you know the secret and these books and stuff like that that our thoughts control our actions and our or our thoughts create a manifest reality um, but it's a little bit different to that, okay? And I work with using thoughts to, to create an emotion because it's very hard. Well, it's impossible to have a thought without an emotion attached to it, okay? Um, and then from that emotion to create a vibration and to be able to keep that vibration because I believe that the vibration is the language of the universe and that's what we are speaking. So if we can get ourselves in a certain vibrational state, okay, then this attracts things into our life. Um, and it's very, very funny, this, uh, the, the Vanuatu experience for me and me living on this island. Um, I actually came over here, uh, it was around about six years ago after they had a, a large cyclone. They had a Category 5 cyclone that was devastating for the, for the, for the country. Um, but we came over here with Red Cross um, and did some, did some humanitarian work and, and some aid work and stuff like that. Um, at the end of our trip, we were actually, we went zip lining. Um, we went zip lining at this place and we did the zip line. That was fantastic. And then we finished and we we're sitting down, we we're having a coffee and we're looking out over this. We're up on this hill looking out over this beautiful aspect. And I sat there and it was something clicked in me. I said, I want this in my life. And I, I, I didn't mean I wanted Vanuatu or anything like that, but just this tropical water with the coral reef. And there was a little island there and we we're sitting up high in this aspect um, and it's so funny as you know, the, you fast forward down the track and, um, you know, three years later, we bought the property just in front of it. Um, so we bought 14 hectares just in front of it. And it's just, it's amazing how this, these can, things come to fruition when you keep them in your mind and you're aware of you know, how things manifest and how things come about. Wow. That's, uh, that's exciting. And I, I was actually thinking about this today, probably because I knew that you and I were going to connect a little bit later. And so, I've been thinking about that, you know, manifestation and the things that have come into my life. Uh, most recently, this has been, I think I was introduced to it like many people were through the secret, but then it's sort of been like once the Pandora's box was opened that this kind of life was possible, then I was like, I wanted to know more and, you know, more detailed of it. And you're right that the thought must be coupled with the emotion and it's the ones that are with the emotion I think well how come I brought this into my life but I haven't yet brought this into my life and it's usually because there's been that emotional piece and oftentimes like you said you were you know in this place where you were open and you were happy and and that's when you said I want to be there and you felt it and that was like the click that like moves it to the next mm -hmm. level and I was thinking well, the reason I have this is I had a moment where I said, I want that. And it was so crystal clear. And even if I didn't necessarily think the thought again, specifically in that way, there was already this sort of trend in terms of the mindset that began to bring it, you know, to me. I'd love you to sort of elaborate on that, right? With the strength and the clarity, if someone's thinking it's hard to do that when all they can see is what is, which is sometimes challenging, right? When you look at the, re the reality as it is currently, and you want to create something different. Yeah, well, I, when I work with people, I look at the underlying emotion behind it. So, I mean, we all have these thoughts. Um, I work with a lot of women and a lot of women want to manifest their king or, or manifest a love into their life. Um, and this is probably the, the most prevalent example of it that I come across is women who want to manifest this love or manifest this beautiful thing into their relationship. When we dig underneath it, we dig why there's, there's a fear. There's a fear of loneliness or a fear of, you know, of not having someone or, you know, growing old without someone or, or, you know, not having children or whatever it may be. So if you're manifesting from that level and it doesn't matter what thoughts you're putting out there, if your underlying emotion is, is from a place of fear, um, you know, that loneliness, um, say on a very basic level, if you want to manifest a car and you want to go out there and create a car or, or get something like that, but you want to get a new car because you're, you know, you're sick of driving around your shitbox and you're scared it's going to break down and all this sort of stuff. This is, you know, this is a very negative, and I call them base, basement emotions opposed to balcony emotions. So you must make sure these emotions are coming from a positive state. Um, you know, creating a king or creating, um, you know, a relationship in your life, this must come from a positive from a positive state it must be you know something like you know something like a child in your life like there's nothing more beautiful and, and and amazing than that so i want to create a child in my life that's a very high vibrational positive thing 
Okay, so oh, I want to create something. You know, it, it has to be. It has to have this underlying emotion of of something that is a high vibrational, opposed to a fear, whether it be a loneliness, you know, attached to potentially some shame or some sort of guilt around around what's going on there. So this is the first thing I do is try to get underneath that and find out what the underlying emotion is. What is it that people really, really want, and what is it? What is the motivator behind that? Um, and to be able to flick that and to change that, it's not too hard to change that. And it's just a, it's just an awareness put on it. Okay, well, look, I want a king because I'm sick of being lonely. I want someone in my life because I'm sick of being lonely. It's very easy to change that into, no, I want to create a family and, and, and to change that thought process. Um, and it's just, and this is the consistency part of it. And it's just keeping consistent and, you know, and, and continuing to, to remind yourself that, you know, you're doing this from a high vibrational standpoint opposed to, you know, a place of loneliness or, or fear. Hey, hey, it's Candice. I hope you're really enjoying the show. I know I certainly am. I want to give a big shout out to one of the products that I absolutely love using. So this is 36 year old skin and I am in love with it. Yes, I am wearing a teeny tiny bit of foundation. I'm wearing a little bit of eyeshadow, but in general, I want to go like really, really close. This is my skin. Phenomenal, right? So I recently started using a product called BioCell. BioCell is liquid collagen. Now there's a lot of buzz about collagen right now, um, but you want to find one that is mirrors closest the human kind of collagen. I was super impressed with this particular collagen. This is made with only the sternums of chickens. So that's the, you know, the sternum bone of chickens in a place that has already ethically and humanely uh, taken care of these chickens and this. And so we're basically using a part of the chicken that would normally just disappear um, and be used for other things. I have not gotten into the collagen world before now, mostly because I know that a lot of the collagens out there, especially the powdered collagen, they have things like cow hooves and pig hooves and noses. And I just wasn't interested in putting that sort of thing in my body. A, I do try to live a more plant-based lifestyle. This is one of the few products that I allow to uh, have animal in it, um, but I absolutely love it. I'm also really impressed with the company behind it. They're a values-driven company. And if you know from watching any of my shows, values matter to me. They've got a number of values. One, to be disruptive in the industry. And you know me, I like to be a little bit irreverent and go against the grain once in a while. I also really love that they're, one of their values is humility and compassion because those are huge and important to me. So if you're looking for a place to spend your money and no, it's not an arm and a leg. No, it's not an MLM. <laughs> this is affiliate marketing, which means if you did decide to purchase this product, yes, I would in fact get a small commission, which has nothing to do with your products or your purchase or the price point on the product, to be honest with you. It is simply 10 to 36% for me, depending on how many of this awesome product that I get a chance to move. Also, I'm paid daily, which I think is pretty amazing. So if you're somebody who's looking for some collagen and you just want to be your customer, I have got a $10 code. Drop a link uh, or a comment below or feel free to message me and I will share with you my link so that you can get 10 bucks off of your first order. If you are somebody who's thinking, hey, I would like to get some product and also like to break into the affiliate game, that's a passion for me. I love teaching women and men, but mostly women, how to master the affiliate game. Once you learn how to do it with one company, you can do it with anything else. So I hope that you're enjoying the show. And without any further ado, back to the show. Do you find, Ren, really the awareness of that underlying uh, emotion is, is so crucial? And I, I love that you say that because oftentimes, Sam, when I'm recording these podcasts, I do a couple of them, you know, back to back. And what's um, interesting to me is, is this, there's a theme. And it's funny because it's not like I, you know, coordinate them and, and put everybody together or things like that. But even here, it seems like there's a, a synchronicity. And today, one of the key words that came up was both being present and really being realizing like, the underlying emotions that I was discussing and one that, you know, scarcity is very much a, a very common, you know, thought process that's put in it sort of, you know, put away for a rainy day or, you know, plan on this in case this happens. And it's subtle, but it's there and it creates this thoughts of scarcity, whether it's about love or relationships or, you know, specifically, I was talking about, you know, being a woman and, and in business that we're looking for a seat at the table, one, 
one seat at the table rather than just expanding the table, right? Or creating a bigger pie and, and that sort of thing right down to this emotion on, like you say, on love, which is, you know, where is that coming from? From a place of not wanting to be lonely or the place of I'd like to create this. And I can even feel it in my body as I'm saying the two. One brings a sense of like, I'm able to breathe. And one is more of a, oh, that's going to be a lot of work. And I don't know how I'm going to get there. And I wonder if that's true for, for other people as well. Yeah, I think so. And it's, it's quite funny. I'm in synchronicity. I was just, I was on another call this morning and, uh, you know, um, consulting to, to one of the businesses I consult and he was talking about you know saving money for a rainy day and I said well what are you wishing for you know well, what are you what are you looking for and it's like, it was just so funny that you said that because it's so true I mean that creating you know saving money for a rainy day I mean there's the smart finances all that sort of stuff but I mean if you're wishing for rainy days you're going to get rainy days um so yeah I, I find it prevalent very very prevalent in in a, in a lot of uh, you know a lot of people that I work with around the manifestation um, but the biggest thing, and I, I suppose we'll touch on this, the biggest thing I find, you know, with, with manifestation, where I've gone with my manifestation work, and I'm, I suppose this work and having a, having a, a deep seated spiritual practice like meditation and self inquiry, um, is people are still manifesting from a place of mind. Um, and so they're using their own mind to manifest things, which is very limited, because we all know that we've got our childhood wounds, we're all fucked up some way. Okay. Um, so there's the, <laughs> yeah. there is, I mean, you can't go through life without it, you know, um, as, as good of a parents that you did have or whatever it may be, there are all sorts of woundings there. So yeah. when you manifest from the mind, this is where scarcity comes in. Um, so I work with manifestation uh, coupled with surrender um, and surrender to the divine. Um, and this is, this is hugely important because you're going from, you know, what is limited and very much limited, which is your perception on the world and, and, you know, the reality, the manifest reality that you create opposed to something that is divine, which is, which is unlimited, which is infinite. Um, and you, you don't worry too much about the specifics. The practice we go through is you, you know, you, you create this, this vibration in your body and then you leave this vibration. Okay. You leave this vibration up to what is infinite. You give it to God, if you like, or whatever your beliefs are. I don't, I don't like the term God, but you give it to, you give it to whatever you like. And you trust that, you know, their plan is so much more divine and amazing than you. And you just trust that if I'm at this vibration, I'm just here to receive whatever comes my way. Um, and that opens up a world of possibilities. This is, this is where I've really seen the power of manifestation come in is, is, is being able to surrender around it. And being able to really, really trust in, you know, God's plan or, or you know, the divine cause or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Do you find that both for yourself and then when you're working with other people that surrender peace? I know that that's, um, I spent a lot of my career um, being more in my masculine energy, which was much more about push and, and you know, movement and expansion. And then in the last year or so through circumstances that have happened, just finding myself leaning more into my feminine, which is way more about receiving, which has been quite the mindfuck, if I can say it, to learn how to, oh, hello, to learn how to stay in that space where I'm more in the receiving. So saying, hey, I would love this and this is where I'd like to go and this would be awesome. And then like you say, that leaving it and the trusting it, which will come right down to I spend my time meditation, I sit there and think, do I need to reach out to anybody? Or what's the next thing for me? And I'll hear whispered, go and clean your room. I'm like, that's the next step in terms of, you know, manifesting what I'm what I'm hoping for today. And wouldn't you know it every single time, my phone starts buzzing. And if I wasn't present doing something else, that was just sort of keeping me in that mode of manifesting and imagining what was going to come, then I wouldn't know what that next step was. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's, it's it's a it's a hard thing surrender because I, I I can definitely relate to that masculine piece. You know, I sort of been in business my whole life and I spent you know, 10, 15 years. I call it beating beating life into submission, and I was good at it, and I made money, and I drove fast cars, and bought Swiss watches, and did all that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, I it was insatiable. It was it was a hunger that I was never going to feed. So I was just continually chasing the next the next thing, the next house, the next car, the next, the next achievement to give myself some sort of position in, in a, in a false reality that I created. 
Um, it's it, it's quite funny and it, and it just never stops. And I remember thinking this, and this was, I suppose, my my whole idea. I don't like to be cliche, the spiritual awakening or whatever. I sort of, to be honest, I grew up with, you know, both my parents are yogis. Um, so, you know, I've always been around the spiritual world. Um, but, you know, for this, this decision to really move away from the Western world and come live in an island and, you know, change my idea of bu- abundance to, to freedom opposed to possession. Um, and, you know, I'd rather trees and the ocean and all this sort of and nature around me than a fast car, you know what I mean? And this, I, I think this came about for me just, just understanding or, or from experience understanding that it was just insatiable. I was just chasing the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And yes, I could beat life into submission. I got really, really good at doing this, but was it making me happy? Because we have this idea in our head that the next thing, the next car, the next house, the next relationship, it doesn't matter what it is. The next thing is going to make us happy. And it does for a very, very short period of time, but then that subsides and then we're back where we're at. Um, where with a deep spiritual practice and, you know, when you, when you really look at surrendering to things and really letting go of, of, you know, your, your attachment to creating this and just trusting that I'm going to live in this vibration, things will come my way. And I just say, yes, um, it's a lot easier way to be. And consequently I've made a lot more money. It's, it's. (laughs) Are you looking for a simple, easy weight management solution? I thought you might be. I know I was. I also wasn't interested in something with a ton of gimmick without any science behind it, which I know a ton of companies have. The company I'm about to share with you actually has 12 of their own clinical studies. And for me, with my science-based background, I needed to know that. I also needed to know the product worked. And so I was introduced to the group that, however, I had 125,000 members in it all supporting amazing stories of weight management, weight loss, hair regrowth. Oh my gosh. Not surprising though, considering the product itself has won numerous awards in and out of the nutraceutical industry, which I think is pretty incredible. Pretty exciting as well is the fact that it's made with their patented technology, seven international patents on the collagen in this product made entirely from chicken sternum. Chicken sternum, why? Because it most closely mimics the collagen that our own bodies create. Now I'm a 36 plus year old woman. And so making sure that I'm maintaining and taking care of and trying to reverse the clock so I can age gracefully is super important to me. Making sure I'm taking products that are safe, making sure I'm taking products that are approved and making sure I'm taking products that I would be happy to share because there's integrity at the top. So this company is a values-based company, which I absolutely love. Not only do I love that, but I love the flavors. This is mango. Mango is my favorite. This is from the Modera company, which you've heard me talk about before. One simple spoonful a day. In the morning, I can add it to my coffee if I feel like it. I don't add the mango. I add the vanilla to my coffee. (laughs) But I can add a simple spoonful to my day. It tastes awesome. It tastes amazing. And it's helping my body to maintain the figure that I've worked to get to. Why not? Now, if you're looking for some weight management, this is going to help curb appetite. It's going to help your body to function as best. And we know that when you do something like that and you make wiser choices, your body says thank you. This is part of an entire system called the lean body system. I will make sure to post information for that below, or you're welcome to scan the QR code, which I know is going to be somewhere in the screen if you're watching this on YouTube. If not, head over to modere.ca, that's M-O-D-E-R-E, modere.ca, or modere.com, and use code 5579027. Again, 5579027 to save 10 bucks on your next order, regardless of what you put in your cart. Thanks so much. Have a great rest of the listen. (laughs) Well, the thing is, uh, a number of years ago, I uh, began going through the process of a divorce, and I just had a sense, I mean, before that time... Um, I feel like there was two parts of my life. And so one where I was, had been introduced to business. I'd grown up in a great environment on my parents' farm. I had very simple and then sort of got into the city and into the world and introduced this world of business. I thought I can do that. And then found out that I you know, could and did and, you know, had the big car and had the nice house and all of these different things. That's a whole other story. But then found through going through the divorce and letting go really to, to lighten the load. I had this overwhelming desire to not be so tied down to these things, right? You buy this big house and you're working so hard and you're never actually in the house, enjoying the house because you're so busy working to pay for the house. And I was like, this is dumb. I actually really want 
to be free. Like you said, that abundance could be freedom rather than, than things. And so I shrunk right down to the fact that I live in a, in a tiny house and everybody says, you know, how do you have stuff? And I'm like, actually, there are still spaces in the tiny house that are not full of stuff because I don't need the stuff. And what would happen is the smaller I chose to live, the more expansive the rest of my life became. And all of a sudden it was like, well, yes, I can do that. Yes, I can travel. I can do that. I can try that. And it's it's been incredibly freeing. And I love sharing that with people because I'm like, listen, this whole less is more thing, it's way bigger than you think it is. And it's a bit of a, it like, it still messes with my brain when I think about it, right? Like I had to go smaller Definitely. to expand. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. I mean, and, uh, and that's, I bet that brings me the thoughts around service. And, you know, a lot of people don't really understand service in, in, in a, in a, in a purest aspect. Okay. And, uh, you know, I was like, right now in the beginning of the call, I mentioned uh, we're opening a, a car wash in Vanuatu. Um, and I'm opening it with a local guy and he's got a block of land and stuff like that. But my whole idea going into this is just service. You know, I'm going to fund it. I'm going to do this, but just service. And there's, there's a strong understanding after being in service and helping and supporting people that I know that this is going to come back and it doesn't need to come back from him. It doesn't need to come back from him or it doesn't need to come back in any certain way. But when you're out there putting yourself out there, supporting and helping other people, it is a boomerang. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a massive boomerang effect. And this is, this is a, another huge, you know, um, chat around abundance is, is that to be able to be in true service. Um, and, you know, you've got to, you've got to not get taken advantage of and all that sort of stuff. You've got to set strong boundaries. But I think once you've sort of got that in check and you know your worth and everything like that, um, and if you're going to do something for someone, just, just do it for the love of it and trust that it will come back because mm-hmm. it does. And it never comes back from that person. Well, never. sometimes does. But it always, <laughs> there's always a way of it coming it's back. It's one of my favorite things, you know. And I was talking to a friend of mine a, a number of weeks ago because, you know, I have a magazine attached to the podcast, right? Which we have the rule that, you know, we have some suggested values just based on time, effort, and energy that goes into create each page. But we basically said, look, pay what you can, as you can, when you can, right? The value you see, and we're going to move forward and create this collaborative team essentially to create an intentional referral community. That's, that's basically the whole idea and to, and to grow from there. And from that, it's been incredible. And somebody was like, well, how are you going to get paid? And I said, that's not my job. The universe always takes care of that. My job is to basically continue to create these collaborative relationships and move forward and to get into service. And I remember her thinking, but how? And I said, but that's what's fun about it. As I said, you keep asking me things like, how did you get someone who just gave you that? Someone just gave you this? And I'm like, whatever it was that we were talking about, it had a pretty decent price tag to it. I said, yeah, they gave it to me freely, happily. And just, you know, here you go. And I said, that's the universe paying me. And they were like, mm-hmm. I got to think about that. And I was like, good, go think about it. If nothing else from today, if someone just walks away and starts thinking about it, you know, like they say on the secret, right? Like go look for those free cups of coffee they'll come from all over the place. And that was a big aha moment for me when I started practicing this manifestation on a small level was, you know, where the coffee would come from. It would come from the most ridiculous places. I'd be sitting down to have coffee with this person and somebody would say, hey, I have an extra, you know, someone made the wrong cup of coffee. Do you want it? I was like, it doesn't always come from the person you think it's going to. And I think that makes manifestation fun. Exactly, exactly. Oh, it is. So I, this is this is Kathy. She likes to bring me everything. So I love it. This is this is my house girl's daughter. So hello. She runs around. She's incredible. Hello. <laughs> so quiet. Hello, sweetheart. I am entirely um, curious about the gigantic um, rocks behind you. What are those? Yeah, we're talking about not needing anything. Then I've got this, like you know, this nearly. <laughs> nearly phallic compensation of a of a of a crystal behind me so no there's um yeah big amethyst they're about seven foot tall um yeah i got them i got them i got them shipped directly from brazil so if you want a cheap hookup i've got i've got a number for you we're totally talking afterwards i've always wanted to have a citrine tub that's (laughs) i will feel like i have arrived when i have a citrine Tub. Um, it's always just the one I've aligned to, <laughs> and I really want to bathe in it. <laughs> so that's a secret goal. I don't know if I've ever talked about that. Certainly not on air. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen them online. They're cool. 
Very cool. That's awesome. Very cool. So I guess what's next for you then? Obviously, you know, you're collaborating with some cool locals or local on uh, a car wash, which I love that. That's awesome. Right back to your roots. But what else? Like what else are you up to and offering the world and share with us what you got coming on? Yeah, look, I'm, um, you know, I've been fortunate enough that I've positioned business in a way that it continues to pay and stuff like that. So um, at the moment, I'm not really, um, you know, chasing money and stuff like that. I'm more chasing, um, you know, passion projects, things that I can do. Um, this car wash, which is just, it's just fun. We've got an old derelict building that we can sort of build in. Um, but in, in the online space, um, you know, we've created programs around it. It's Initiation Back to Self is the name of the program, um, which is around meditation. Um, so it's a meditation-based program um, with, I suppose, non-dualistic and self-inquiry concepts. Um, so the meditation practice that I've always been involved in is, is self-inquiry, which is basically asking the question, you know, who am I? Mm -hmm. um, and, and looking beyond that question. Um, so we've, I've put together a, a program around that and I'm also putting together a program around basically what we're talking about now, which is manifestation and abundance and, you know, how to, and also we've got an elemental side of that as well. So how to use different elements to be able to use the manifestation and, you know, so it's, it's, it gets a little bit witchy and occulty, but it's, um, but it's all good stuff. It's all, it's all light magic. So. <laughs> well, I like that stuff. Don't worry. You're, you're, you're <laughs> the choir over here. It's all good. And um, yeah, we, up here, we call it uh, the woo. So, you know, we've embraced our woo, -woo a little bit. And, and, uh, yes. Um, at least for me, it's usually with the intuition. And people often say, well, you know, you talk to someone and they always say yes. And I said, yes, because, um, you know, mama's got some gifts. <laughs> She's listening on who's ready and who's not. But I think that that comes to you with this openness that we've been talking about here, right? The allowing, the surrendering. Um, the listening, you know, that that inner knowing that, um, especially at least for me, when I was more in my masculine and in the push, there wasn't a lot of hearing in terms of that. And so a lot of dead ends and a lot of bumps and a lot of mistakes. And it just seemed to be simpler uh, on the other side of this surrender yeah. and receiving easier. I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, because your ego gets attached to this idea of, of what you need to do. And, you know, you set a goal and then you're so strict on going out there and achieving that. And then all these other things are getting thrown your way and you just miss it. So I think it's huge. You know, it's a, it was quite funny. I just reread the surrender experiment. I don't know if you've read that by Michael A. Singer. No, oh, you'll love it. You'll okay. love it. So um, the surrender experiment, Michael A. Singer. Um, but he just, he, he basically just says yes and surrenders and ends up building this huge empire of a business and has all this property. And he, all he wanted to do was just, yeah, you know, buy, buy a little house, tiny house and meditate. Um, but things kept coming his way and he said, all right, universe, yes, universe, yes. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's rather an amazing story. So that's wonderful. I feel like that's what it's been like for me since, uh, the beginning of 2020, when I shut down everything with the intention that I was going to just be present and not chase so much. And then, uh, opportunities like the magazine and the podcast have just sort of kept coming. And in most of my life, I was the one who had this idea and I said, we're going to do this. And I made a plan and then I either delivered it or, you know, created it and, and that sort of thing. And oftentimes people around me would say, Are you sure? Is this a good thing? Is this what the plan is? Is this a distraction? And literally, I feel like I could write a book and call my life detours because I would detour then I'd come back, literally move back to the same street or the same house or the same. And I'm thinking, okay, that was totally a detour, but what did I learn? Whereas now I have this idea and it, it more feels like a pull, like from my solar plexus, it's just a gentle pull. And do I know where it's going? Not necessarily. Can I sense that there's some good and some abundance and some openness there? Yeah, those are all the good sensations I look for in my, in my body. And then people around me, I'll say, you know, I'm not 100% sure on this and I want to make sure I'm being wise and smart. And people will go, this is brilliant. Like, what are you talking about? which has been such a difference in terms of, you know, the being in the flow or not being in the flow, you know, just how those things come together. And I'll say, give me a sign, you know, like, give me a sign. And, you know, the next thing that happens is like, you know, go for it. I'm like, of course, there's a sign, right? Like, it's ridiculous how, how straightforward <laughs> it is when you can find that flow to get there. So it is, it is. And it's just, it's, it's, it's a scary process though. It's a, it takes an initial letting go of, and that's the biggest thing is that's just what I noticed moving, moving away from my business that I created over a 15 year period to live on an Island where I had no control. That was scary. I was like, 
you know, for an entrepreneur and a control freak at that, you know, I was like, oh, this is scary. But the, the more I let go, the more, the more the flow came into my life. And it really is like a, the best way to explain abundance is flow because it really is. And we, we keep putting kinks in the hose because we have, you know, this, this conceived idea of how life's meant to be and how we're meant to do. And we're very rigid and strict and plan our lives out and stuff like that. Where we just, just let it flow. Just unkink the hose and let it flow. <laughs> no, I think about that too, that, you know, there's those moments when I think, oh, great, that's it, I'm done. And um, I, I tease with my my partner. He is like, how come every time we sit down to play, like we'll play the Dominion game or we'll play, you know, a card game or chess. And he's like, your phone has been quiet all day. And the second we sit down to play, the, you just, your phone blows up. And I was like, I said, I know there's something I could learn here because this is the one part of the day where I stopped meditating on my business. I stopped thinking about it. I literally went, I'm going to have some fun now. And then boom, it comes through. And I think, how can I, how can I do more of that throughout the day? <laughs> because it's just, it's crazy as you start to do that stuff. Let go. That's the, that's the key, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of listening in, there's a key thing. Now, I'm I'm already thinking of a couple of people who I know are going to be listening to this, and they're going to, you know, buzz me, and they'll say, "Okay, how do I let go?" Because this is still something that they may be learning or they're beginning to realize. I think for some people, when they, it can be a little bit offensive to them, or at least I've seen them react offensively when I, you know, when I say, you know, we've created it. So if you're in it and you're experiencing it it's a creation and it's yours. Mm. And then you usually go, well, I didn't create this. And why would I create this? And then I think, well, how do we help them begin to shift that so that they can get more into the flow and change up what they have currently created? Hmm. Mm. It's a good question. Um, for me, look, it's, it's, for me, it's been a process. Okay. But it's, um, for me, through, through meditation practice, is when you when you touch God or you or you you feel that that vibration that I feel through meditation and that 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 wholeness and that completeness, there becomes a a trust that becomes embodied in your being. Okay, and it's nothing that can be taught it's it's very different like you could read all the spiritual books in the world okay and this is this is for me an important part of spirituality is to have a practice because you can go read all the books you can go to all this you can watch all the podcasts you can watch all the youtube clips and stuff like that but it doesn't embody it once you have an experience okay and for, for me that experience is is through meditation it seems to yeah it seems to resonate throughout your body and there becomes a trust and it's not a it, it's a big difference it's not a knowledge it's a knowing it's a knowing. Okay, I just know, and I know to trust now, and I know this is going to work out. Um, so, for me, and I suppose my advice for, for people is to find a way to be able to get yourself in that vibration that is close to God, whether that be even through prayer. Like I'm definitely not religious, but even if that's through prayer, or you know, if you need to go to Peru and drink plant medicine or whatever it may be it's uh, but, but whatever it is whatever it is you got to do for me that's meditation i'm not big on plant medicine I've, you know i've taken ayahuasca and it didn't do anything for me or anything like that but it's um but i think that's because i sit in meditation for for an hour a day and that's 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 a big part of it but once you start to touch that and you understand the the infinite the, the infinite of of who you are um and the infinite being that you are you trust that you know Life is actually working for you. You just got to get out of the fucking way. Um, That's so brilliant. That's like the tagline for this mm. podcast. Life is actually working for you. You got to get out of the fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm Australian. I do swear. I don't even know. I swear when no, I swear. It's perfect. I love it. It's it's uh, it's a, it's a good word. Um, you know, there's a Netflix on you know the history of swear words, and it's the most popular one. It's just so versatile. So I, I hear you. <laughs> good. <laughs> Well, I, I really appreciate you taking time to to share space with me and talk about this. This is something that I absolutely love, uh, in case you couldn't tell. Um, I think it adds a, a magic quality um, to life, the sort of living and trust and, and by faith, which, you know, I grew up in a Christian home, so that was, it has a very different meaning than it does now, but it's the, the essence is the same, that there's this magical quality that I don't understand um, to life, and it's rigged in my favor, for sure. But I would like to open it up that if there's something you'd like to leave with the listeners, 
Um, and those who are watching us on YouTube later, you know, if there's something else we could leave them with, I'd, I'd love to give you that opportunity now. Yeah, we've touched on a lot of it, um, but to summarize it is, you know, and this is the, this is the basis of spiritual magic or, or what, you know, the Sanskrit word for it is cities. Okay. But if you can, if you can, if you can touch or you can get in the vibration, you know, in, in your heart and the vibration of, 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 of God. Okay. And if you can get that into your heart and you can drop the vibration of that, which you would like to create without attachment. Okay. So not the thing, but just how you'd like to be just that vibration of that. If you can, if you can get that and you can drop that into the infinite space in your heart, um, things create pretty quickly. Um, so my, my advice to anyone is to find a practice that, that gets you in that space, that spaciousness, that, 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 place of infinite possibilities that, you know, that gets you in touch, gets you to hold hands or, you know, the breath of God or whatever you want to call it. Okay. Get in that space and then manifest from that space. And don't worry about what the, what the universe or what the infinite is going to provide you. Just trust that, you know, you are that vibration. So that vibration will come to you. That's amazing. Well, thank you, Sam. I very much appreciate the time we got to spend uh, together today. And um, for our listeners, you know the drill. If you got some value out of today, go and let Sam know, like, share, subscribe, go check out what he's offering online. I'm going to, I'm excited to go and, <laughs> uh, you know, do more of this because this just opened up my eyes when I got to chat with someone who's living my ideal life and how exciting that that is. So again, Sam, thank you so much for sharing space with me today. I appreciate it. It's fine. Thanks for having us, Candice. It's been a great okay. chat.